On today's episode of Locked on Stars, Niels Lundqvist is ready to take the next step. Would you rather postseason addition? And let's preview tonight's matchup against the San Jose Sharks. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Happy Tuesday, Stars fans. Hope you're enjoying the week so far. Get your caffeine ready for tonight. Puck drop is scheduled for 9 30 against the San Jose Sharks. But while you wait, we have plenty of juicy stuff on the docket for today's episode, including would you rather postseason addition? I have three scenarios for you come playoff time and would love your feedback. So plug those answers in the comment section below when we get there. But we must start with Niels Lundquist. And I'm ready to declare he is ready to to be in the lineup come playoff time. He is the answer in the playoffs for what is pretty much the final slot in the defensive pairings. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. I'm sure many of you agree as well, but Niels Lundqvist needs to be in the lineup come the postseason. He deserves it. He is ready to take that next step. He's improved all season long. I think he's even been better in his last three games. And it's not just the eye test that tells me. It is some of the numbers, some of the analytics. But from my perspective, he's ready. He defends at a really, really high level. Maybe not high, but above average level that Yanni Hockenpah can't. He's a really good fit with Ryan Suter, believe it or not. Where at first, the only fit you had was Miro Haskinen, which you stuck Miro with for the past few seasons. And Lundqvist can fill that spot. He's another right shot defenseman with mobility that can jump up on the rush, join the offense. And Hockenpah, albeit has done a really, really nice job offensively in terms of goals and assists and points this season. But we all know Niels adds a different dynamic. Had a couple of helpers the other night against Arizona, but in his last three games, he had a plus two, a minus one against Pittsburgh, and then he was a plus one against Arizona the other night. And he's been a hot topic throughout this season. He was a healthy scratch after about 30 games for the majority of contests. And then Miro got injured. He stepped in and did a fantastic job coming out of the lineup and just jumping in and providing something, showing strides in his game. And we touched on it last week, Pete DeBoer's comments about the power play and how Harley really took control of the second unit. And that was part of the reason why uh, why Niels wasn't in the lineup moving forward. No, not a good enough answer for me. And not a good enough answer for Stars fans out there. It's just not a good enough answer. Miro is going to be the guy on the play uh, on the power play. Harley's going to get his looks, of course, but look, save it. <laughs> he doesn't need to be on the power play because you do have Harley, and you do have Haskin and now who can chew up some of those minutes. But Lundqvist has been playing some really, really good hockey as of late. 
played just over 14 minutes against Pittsburgh and the Coyotes. Uh, just played 11 the other night, but that was due in part to the game being pretty close and the Stars had to shorten the bench a bit and, and Haskinen uh, along with Harley, including Tanev and uh, Lindell played some more down the stretch to make sure that game was sealed off. But a game score of 2.68 against the Coyotes last week, uh, a few days ago was 0.93, uh, minus 1.1, nothing, uh, one zero, excuse me, um, against Pittsburgh wasn't uh, phenomenal in that one, but I just, I just love what he can do. He's defending without taking penalties. He's really good along the walls against big, stronger forwards where you wouldn't see him come out with the puck last season, but now he's starting to win those battles and just compete better. Plus, he's mobile where he can use his feet to get himself out of trouble and get the stars out of trouble and, you know, hit the outlet. And the stars are often running offensively, which Dallas wants to do anyways. They're in the mindset of playing great defense is just playing really good offense. And that has worked for them throughout the season. But when they do get him in and they do have those issues, Lundquist is a much better fit than Yanni Hockenpah. And Hockenpah is huge and he's big and he is physical and he's good on the PK. But Niels is the answer. Hockenpah and Suter are a liability. They were a liability against San Jose a few weeks ago in that wild seven to six game <laughs> and they just they don't they don't have the necessary traits or characteristics that I believe are going to translate come playoff time when Dallas really needs it and I'm all up for having Lundquist and Hawk and Pa move in and out of the lineup depending on how you feel about a certain game depending on how you feel the style of play is going to be against a certain opponent, I think you have to take that into account. And in the playoffs, the game does get a lot tighter. It's not as much room. There's not as much space. So that can factor into your decision. But he's ready. And I think deserves to be in the lineup come the postseason. And just to throw this out here and reiterate a, a few more times. If you take a look at the expected goals against, and this is for pairings that have played at least 115 minutes this season. And you have to disregard Hanley since he's not here anymore. But Lindell and Tanev, 3.5 expected goals against. That is the best pairing for the Dallas Stars. And then you go back down to the eighth spot, Suter and Lundquist. And they're about four in this because of Hanley being gone and Hockenpah being injured. But you're not going to have Hockenpah with uh, some of the pairings that are listed here anyways. Suter and Lundquist. Expected goals against is at uh, 10.2. And, and that seems a bit high from 3.5. You'd be correct, but... Look at this. Haskinen and Harley expected goals against is 15.6. Haskinen and Suter was 20.5. Lindell Hockenpah was by far the worst at 22.6. So relative to other pairings that the Stars have used, that's really good for Suter and Lundqvist. And what's even better is their expected goals against per 60 minutes. They're a bit higher at 2.44. Lindell and Tanev have the best at 1.78. So even their defensive metrics look better than Suter and Hockenpah or Lindell and Hockenpah, which was used very heavily throughout the season until the acquisition of Chris Tanev. And the Stars' defense has improved. They've been better. In this three games alone, I think they've looked really good. 
haven't given up a ton of odd man rushes, have been pretty solid in front of Otter, who has not allowed more than three, or more than two, I should say, in his last three starts, which I think is a sign of him being better. (laughs) Plus, the defense being a lot better. I think they've taken a responsibility in their own zone. So that's my declaration on today's episode of Locked on Stars. He's ready. I think he's ready and deserves to be deserves to be in the lineup come playoff time. And to be honest, I'm not 100% confident that's going to happen. I teeter more on like 70%, 70-30. And even that may be a bit overzealous. Because knowing Pete DeBoer and, and knowing what he's done since his time here in Dallas, he's going to side with Hawk and Pop and the veteran. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But I warned you, I warned you, this is the move that needs to happen. And we'll wait and see, right? We'll get the answers come playoff time. We'll get the answers, but why not start on the right foot, right? Why not start with the right answer, <laughs> says the uh, says the 24-year-old that uh, hasn't coached at an elite level and never will and never will coach. Maybe, maybe a, a youth team is somewhere in my, in my near future. So uh, maybe then I can, I can put the lineups together how I want, but uh, there we go. Okay. Enough with some of the seriousness of today's episode. It's time to have some fun. Would you rather post season edition three statements? I need three answers from you play along with me and we'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Sleeper. The playoffs are right around the corner, Stars fans, and the Dallas Stars are still in the thick of things in the Central Division. And I want to remind you, you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy. Fantasy hockey. Because of Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. You can pick the studs of the National Hockey League, the McKinnons, the Crosbys, the Ovechkins, who's scoring a lot here as of late. Record more or less on Sleeper projections for things like goals, saves, assists, plus minus in a given game. And you could win 100 times your bet on Sleeper if you correctly predict the outcome of eight-player stats. You heard me. You heard me, Stars fans. 100 times your bet playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks, and you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL, by the way, and you'll get up to hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and with location availability. All righty. Three scenarios, scenarios, situations, For the postseason, a little would you rather addition for you have not done this in forever in forever, but I wanted to change it up. I feel like we've been so serious lately and uh, I want to have some more fun and uh, also would love your feedback. So please give me your feedback in the comment section below. My first scenario of would you rather postseason addition? Would you rather have the Dallas Stars? win the Western Conference, but they play the Vegas Golden Knights, or they win the Central Division, and you play the Nashville Predators. And of course, that would be in the current standings as of right now. So that's what I'm going with. Win the Western Conference, you get Vegas, you win the Central, you get Nashville. And this is a a bit of a toss-up for some. Maybe it's easier for others. In my opinion, it's a really, really easy choice. But maybe that's different. Vegas, on one hand, 
has really, really struggled for about a month. But they're dealing with injuries. Of course, they have the LTIR manipulation once again. So you're probably expecting all of their guys to be healthy come playoff time. And then that's a very, very dangerous team with a lot of depth. And that is where the difference is for me in this scenario. I'm taking win the Central. You play Nashville every day of the week. Nashville does not have the depth that Vegas does, number one. And they don't have the depth to match you, especially up front. And I do like some of their young guys, but you also have to factor in Nashville is one of the hottest teams in the league right now. They have been on an absolute tear. So you factor in maybe they're peaking at the right time and maybe they can shock you in round one. I don't know if it's a cakewalk as I thought it would have been back in February or January if you're playing Nashville. Um, I I think it's a a bit tougher now when you look at that, just with the way Nashville has been playing. And they have pieces, right? They didn't didn't just ship off everybody at the trade deadline. They got Forsberg. They got O'Reilly. They got Yossi. They got Soros, who is starting to play better. So they have some pieces in both. That's where I'm going on that first scenario, though. I like you win the Central, play Nashville. Keep me away from Vegas. Keep me away from Vegas as long as you can. Okay, number two, would you rather postseason additions? Let me know. Would you rather play the Edmonton Oilers or Colorado Avalanche in the Western Conference Final? If you make the Western Conference Final, Just hypothetical, would you rather take on Colorado or Edmonton? And I think these two teams are very similar. They have a world-class talent, like generational talents. Of course, McDavid and of course, McKinnon. Two of the top three players in the world and just lighting it up and can win games themselves. (laughs) They really can. A lot of high-end talent, maybe not as much depth. As you go through the lineup, Colorado probably has the edge there over Edmonton, but it's still the best player in the world on the Oilers. And the Oilers do have some good pieces on the back end. Colorado probably has the deepest, maybe of any team defensively in uh, the entire NHL, at least the West. So what does that come down to? Maybe goaltending, Georgia versus Skinner. That one's really tough. And I don't even love the answer, but I'm probably going with Edmonton. And I hate that. Because <laughs> not only is McDavid really good, like Dreisaitl is probably a top eight player <laughs> when he's buzzing. Like one of the best passers in the league, maybe behind Kucherov. So that is a really tough one too. Plus Colorado just has your number. And I don't want to play them on the road in the altitude. They just seem so dangerous because they can take over games, especially McKinnon. McDavid can, but I think the Stars have always done a really good job against him, and and that's the regular season. I I get it, but I think they've done a decent job going against them because they can match up. They can put Miro and Harley on him, match him up there, whereas – Colorado has the depth on the back end and, and the shoe skin. They added Middlestad. That, that's a scary team too. And they're much better defensively. So I'm going with Edmonton on that one. But maybe you like Colorado. I don't know. Maybe more familiar opponents. So um, here we go. The final would you rather scenario. Number three. And, and maybe this will be the toughest out of the other two. Maybe my first two were just not even good. So let me know too. Okay, this is hypothetical. I I don't like bringing this up, but I thought it would add some juicy, juicy conversation to it. Stars are heading into the postseason. You're going to be missing one of these guys, okay? To to whatever it is, suspension, injury, whatever. And we're not going to wait on that. You can't have Jake Ottinger 
or you can't have Wyatt Johnston, Jake Ottinger, or Wyatt Johnston. Maybe that's tough. Maybe it's not. And, of course, Wyatt is incredible. And not having Wyatt really causes concerns with Ben and Stan Coven. Who are they going to be able to put together or put on that duo to make that work? Or are they going to have to really start jumbling the lines if Wyatt is not in the lineup, right? And maybe... You have to break up Pavelski with uh, his sons to try to spread the wealth around. And then is your offense going to be as lethal? You're probably leaving Marchmitt and his trio together just because they are inseparable. But you may have to jostle around some of your other combinations to, to make it work. You don't want to just plug Sam Steele on that line, do you? Is, is that really going to... Uh, kind of spark some life. And then on one hand, Jake Ottinger is, is your number one. Can you be without him? Can you rely on Scott Wedgwood night in and night out? I think you can make the argument you can. I don't think you're going to get the elite level of goaltending you're looking for to make a cup run. But he'll keep you in it on most nights. He'll probably keep you on it every night because <laughs> um, he, he he's shown it. He, he can step up in big moments. My answer for this one, I guess you go without Wyatt Johnston because you have a lot of depth up front and they're really good. But that does really concern me not having him just because I feel like he makes, he, he's been the best stars player in the last, month and maybe that's underselling it maybe the last two months seriously he's been really really good since all-star break of course and um he kind of just seems to be the straw that makes everything stir together and work properly but man i just as much as otter has struggled this season i do not like not having him he is just such an x factor because if he gives you above average goaltending on most nights, the Stars are going to win a lot of games in the postseason. They're going to win a lot of games because goaltending is a great equalizer. It really is. So that's where I'm at on that one. So I would love to hear your feedback on those three answers of would you rather postseason edition? And you can just completely tear me apart if those were terrible scenarios. But in my head, I thought they were fun. And some intriguing thoughts leading in to the postseason. Okay, let's jump into the San Jose Sharks here tonight. And what has been a really, really, really confusing season series <laughs> um, against the Sharks. Maybe we're in for another thriller tonight. We'll do that in just a moment. Hey, Stars fans, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume because they're just shouting constantly. Go ahead, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis. It's available on YouTube, also free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On podcast network so as locked on stars hit that notification bell never miss an episode you can follow me on x joy the jet 19 follow locked on stars on x do it all be engaged it's your team every single day having a ball here recently stars on a four game a win streak looking to make it five against the san jose sharks puck drop scheduled for 9 30 stars have won a three to two game in a shootout against the sharks and they've also won a 7-6 to six overtime thriller earlier this month. Stars are 8-2, by the way, in their last 10. San Jose's 1-7-2, but we all know that does not matter because the Stars have played down to the Sharks during points this season. Plus, San Jose has gotten some really good net minding from uh, Magnus Krona, especially uh, in that 
shootout win. He was he was brilliant, and so was Otter actually. <laughs> uh, for for that matter, that was a, a pretty pretty crazy game. But uh, I, I'm excited for this one just because I feel like this is gonna there's gonna be fireworks one way. It's either gonna be a blowout or it, it's going to be that that seven six game. Uh, we saw the, the other nights, but, uh, they are without some of their scores because hurdles gone, of course, at the trade deadline Duclair as, as well, but the stars really got tore up by Granlund and Duclair, some of their top guys, Adina as well. So those are the, the players that the stars have to be cautious with. And, um, they have had their fits with some top lines, Recently, look at Arizona, Bukestad and Cooley were, were given the Stars uh, fits the other night and were able to cash in for uh, a couple of the Coyotes goals. I think Wedgwood gets the gets the nod here tonight. He's 15, 6, and 5 this year, 2.84 goals against average, 902 save percentage, very, very solid numbers. I think Wedgwood probably gets the nod tonight. Um, of course, just had the birth of uh, his daughter. So um, would great to be get him back in the mix. I think this is a great spot for, for Otter to uh, get a rest in. And then you can uh, play him on Thursday uh, against Vancouver. So a, a really, really in, intriguing game tonight. Uh, they're coming off uh, a five to four loss at the hands of, uh, of the Blackhawks, um, they are bad in a lot of areas. They don't score a ton, and they give up a lot. They're 32nd in both of those categories. But we all know that does not matter because the Stars like to play very, very interesting games. So, um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, may maybe we're uh, in for that uh, uh, again. Uh, they have a power play that's pretty decent, though, at 21%. Their PK's bottom five in the league um their goals forward and goals against is both last so uh the stars theoretically should have an advantage but um we all know that is uh not always uh nothing to, to ride home about so uh excited for some um west coast hockey stars have been great on the road it would be great to just get through this one easily You're, you got this four game win streak going continue to to gather points, Sam, believe it or not, the Stars are just a few points out of winning the President's Cup. <laughs> um, if, if you look at the league, there are seven teams within a point of being number one. Vancouver and New York at the top at 98 points, and then you have five teams at 97. D Dallas is a part of it, Carolina, Colorado, Boston. It's... um. This is insane how congested it is, and and, and I touched on it yesterday at the uh, at the tail end of the episode. Just how congested it is, not only in the central but just the west in general. Everybody's within three points of each other, and it feels like it's going to go down to the very last game when we know the uh, the exact seed the stars are going to get in the postseason, but. Um, uh, Dallas needs, uh, needs two points, right? Needs two points. That's the goal. Nothing less. It's a failure. It's a failure. If you don't bring two points into Vancouver on Thursday night, stars, sharks, nine 30 puck drop. You can catch the game on Sirius XM. Go to the SXM app. Just search stars to find the hometown broadcast with Josh and Razor Stars on that four game win streak. As I mentioned, they're playing very, very well, including Jamie Ben, who has scored in four straight. Can he continue that streak? Stars now have 44 wins 44, 19, and nine. What they finished with last year, I want to say it was 108 points. They have 10 games remaining. Yep, 108 last season. So, uh, a possible uh, what, 20 points uh, on the board. So I, I don't think they should have an issue with, with the schedule down the stretch, at least matching that. Uh, but let's see if they uh, can surpass that. Excited for tonight. Um, just feels like these games get a little frisky sometimes. So hopefully uh, today's episode was enjoyable enough that you could enjoy it.
It's before tonight's game. Maybe you needed a little appetizer uh, with a late start. So um, we'll break it down tomorrow, of course, per usual. And we'll go from there, right? We'll go from there. We're in a good spot right now, Stars fans. Everything's coming together. Everything's coming together. Not a ton to get worked up about, which is uh, which is good. I feel like I got worked up for three weeks in a row. I was getting tired of it. It's like, just play good hockey. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. All righty. That'll do it for today's episode. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll break it down and we'll go from there. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy tonight's game. Get that caffeine ready and we'll see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.